Section 2, Making a Package. 2.1, Creating an Empty Package. We're going to look at creating a folder to contain a package, making sure Python recognized as a package instead of just a folder, and making sure that Python can find the package when we ask it to import it. Very simple Python projects may consist of a single code module, but normally they are multiple modules combined together into a package. A package can contain as many modules as we need. Packages start their lives as folders on the file system, which means we can make them just as we would any other folder. If you prefer to use your operating system's file browser to make folders, that's fine, but I usually use the command line. There are two things that turn a regular folder into a package. The first of those two things is where it is. Python only looks in certain places for packages, and if your folder isn't in the right place, Python won't notice it. The sys.path variable that I've just displayed on the screen contains a list of all the places Python will look for packages on my system. It will change on other systems to reflect the differences between local installations. Notice that the first entry in the sys.path list is an empty string. That stands for the current working directory. For those of us using the command line, the current working directory is just the folder we're currently in. We can change the current working directory with a cd command. The fact that the current working directory is on the path is convenient during development. It means we can just set the current working directory to the place where we're doing our development, and all of our packages become available, at least as long as we use the command line to launch Python. The second thing that turns a regular folder into a package is the presence of an init.py file. Though not strictly necessary since Python 3.3, an init.py file marks the folder as a package, which makes it load more efficiently and also gives us a place to put information and code relevant to the API of the package as a whole. While it's quite common that an init.py file is completely empty and serves only as a marker, there's one language feature that won't be supported unless we add a little code to the file. That feature is the ability to import all of the package's modules using the import star syntax. If we want Python to be able to do this, we have to tell it what it means by all of the package's modules. To do that, we add the module names to a list called all in the init.py file. You may be wondering why we need to do this manually rather than Python just scanning the file system for module files. There are a couple of reasons. First, Python tries not to make any assumptions about whether file names are case sensitive or not. On some operating systems they are, and on others they're not. Module names are variable, so it's better if they originate within the source code rather than depending on something external that might change. The second reason for doing this manually is that importing a module makes code execute. Imagine we have a package that plays soundtracks. In addition to the general purpose code, we also have a bunch of modules to handle audio output on various systems. It's quite reasonable for our users to do an import star to bring the package API into their module, but we don't want all of the output modules to load, just the ones appropriate for the system we're running on. Trying to load all of the others would likely trigger an exception in the, in the user's code. The way the all variable works now, we can exclude the output modules from the import star and get the best of both worlds. All right, let's make sure that Python is willing to import our demo package. So the package folder can be created from the command line or from whatever graphical interface you find most comfortable. If the folder is in one of the places Python searches and has an underbarred init.py file, it's a package. We can support from package import star if we put a, a double underboard all list inside of the init.py file. And we can check that the package is valid by using the Python interactive shell to try importing it. And then we'll move on to how to add source code modules to a package in the next video.